As you might expect, Sage One Accountant is very much accountant centric. And what you're going to see is that when you get your account set up with Sage One Accountant, the whole thing is based on you sending an invite to your client to join with you in the Sage One product. And what that really means is you're going to enter their email address, they're going to receive an email, and as you'll see during the setup process, you actually have an option that, that's included where you can ask Sage One to intervene and help your client get set up, which is a really powerful option, I think, and you're probably going to want to take advantage of that with most, if not all, of your clients that you get into Sage One Accountant. Outside of that, we're going to look at the basics of setting things up. We're going to look at look, uh, how to create accounts in the chart of accounts. I always want to see how do I get a transaction posted is one of the first things I always want to do anytime I'm exploring new accounting software. I just want to make sure I understand how that part works at a minimum and just to get started. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it, what it means when it comes to setting up Sage One Accountant. Come on, let's see what this looks like. Setting up Sage One Accountant Edition. It's pretty simple I think you're going to find. You're going to go right here to sageone.com and you're going to choose your country. I'll pick United States because that's where I am. And then I want to have you go over to accounts and bookkeepers. And by the way, before I even go any further, it's really important if you're taking this course that you do this so that you can follow along with me. The only way you're really going to learn this kind of stuff is if you're prepared to kind of do what I'm doing, pause the video, go try it, make sure that you understand what I did, how I did it, and then continue. That's really the best way to learn. That's the beauty of learning from a video is that you have the ability to do that. In a classroom setting, of course, you can't ask the teacher to pause while you go catch up and learn what they just taught you, right? You have to kind of take notes and do that on your own later. That's why I love this format for learning, especially for software. So we're going to click Accountants and Bookkeepers, and we're going to click Sign Up Now. I'm not going to do that because I've already prepared here um, you know, where I'm actually logged into my sample account. Now, what you're going to see in between what I just showed you in here is a very simple interview where you're going to set up your business. You're going to tell it the name of your business and some basic information, address, phone number, what have you, and of course your email address. And then you're going to get taken here where it says we're processing your application. However, you can get started by inviting up to three clients until your application is proved is approved. And of course right over here is where you can click to invite a client and that's going to be as simple as entering in their name, their email, and their telephone. And then you check off this option here where it says my client needs help setting up Sage One. I would like a Sage One representative to call my client. So with Sage One Accountants Edition, everything centers around you as the accountant. And as you can see right here, you even have the option of essentially asking Sage to follow up with your client to help them get onboarded. How nice is that? Uh, the invitation format, of course, you have some choices here. Let's go back. So, of course, you can invite your clients in, but you may want to play around a little bit before you do that just to make sure that you're familiar with the product before you get your clients into it. And I think you can already start to see right here that we have a really nice interface with this cloud accounting product. And you're also going to find out, I know many of you who are in our community have indicated that you've looked at Sage before, but if you have, it's time to look again because they've just made a whole bunch of updates to the product so that it really is every bit as robust as any of the other other cloud accounting products that you may already be using. And I think with the beautiful interface that we have here, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. And you can build yourself another stream of revenue by learning what I'm teaching you in this course so that you can start to service clients who are using Sage One. So let's click over here. You're going to get this sample company with a new account. If you already have a Sage account, then they're still rolling out the updates to those accounts. Uh, so you may not have it yet. And if you want to get in there and play around, just use a different email address and set up a new account just to play around so you can get access to the sample data. When you first access a company from that list that was there, you can add notes here, which is great because I can add notes for my clients to see. These obviously would be very sort of general global notes about the company, what's going on, maybe what you're doing with the accounting. Um, and of course, up here is where you can click access the client's accounting premium account. Okay, and then in the initial setup, you're going to be taken to this screen here where, you, as you can see, you can create or import customers. You can enter money customers owe you, review the age receivables report, right? So all the things you would expect to have to do, linking bank accounts, setting up vendors, your chart of accounts. And we're going to take a look at all this stuff. Uh, optional extras, customizing your invoices. Uh, do you sell products or services? So you can create import details for super fast sales. Uh, do you have department or cost codes or projects, right? 
do you buy or sell in foreign countries? Do you work with colleagues? Review default settings and preferences. So one of the first things I always like to do, especially the first time I'm playing around with a new accounting product, the first thing I want to do is I want to get into the bank account and I want to record a transaction. I just want to make sure I understand at least how to do that much right off the bat. So let's go to banking. And over here you can see where you can connect your bank account. You'll also see that I've already recorded a $100,000 deposit because I did exactly what I just described. The first thing I wanted to do was get in here and figure out, all right, I'm starting a new company. We're going to start the account off with $100,000. So now I'm going to show you what I did, and we're going to assume that we're actually adding another $50,000 in contributed capital to get this company started. So over here I can say new entry. Right, and so it's an expense or a payment or a sale or a receipt. Right, a sale or a receipt meaning the the owner contribution is a receipt. Right, we receive money. So the sale or receipt, any incoming funds are going to go there. Notice I have a customer receipt or an other receipt or a vendor refund. I'm receiving a refund from a vendor. So they kind of lay it out really nice and clear here in terms of these are all the different ways that I would get money. Either I'm getting paid by a customer or I'm putting money in, I'm getting some other form of, of cash inflow, or I'm getting a refund from a vendor. That pretty well describes it. Other, of course, would be where I'd go also if, let's say, I'm getting a loan from a bank, right, and I want to enter that. So now notice under other receipt, the customer details are optional because I might get money from a customer that's other than uh, for income purposes, so to speak. Here it's required, right? If, if I'm saying it's a customer receipt, it's required. Over here it's optional. So first we're going to choose the bank account. I'll choose the date. I'll leave it with the uh, date that I'm recording this video, June 8th, 2015. And the bank balance shows my 100000 in there, right? Over here I need to do the amount received. So this is the global total amount, right? So let's say it's another 50000 and then notice what happens is down below here, it fills in the first line. It assumes it's all going you know, into one account, 50000 But obviously, this is where I could split it up if I needed to. So let's say I wanted to put owner. There it is, owner's contribution right there. Details, additional initial capital. Right, obviously no tax on that. And over here, it shows me what's left to record. So if I said the total was 50000 and I only put twenty five. It lets me know, hey, there's 25000 left to record. I need to finish. Okay, and then over here, it kind of, as soon as I fill in one line, it adds a blank line for me in case I want to add an additional amount to the split. So now we're going to save that. And then you know what I'm going to want to do next. If you know me, if you've taken my courses before, you know I want to run a balance sheet now. I want to see what this looks like on the balance sheet. And sure enough, there it is. There's my checking account with 150,000 total assets, 150,000. And I, I just, I, I love this interface. I really believe, I think this is a gorgeous user interface. I think it's really easy on the eyes, really easy to follow and understand what I'm looking at. I love the way this kind of lines up with the detail and then the grand total. It reminds me of what it looked like when I learned this stuff back in college, right? We'd kind of have the column and then it would foot to the total, which would be the next column over. That's how I gotten used to looking at this stuff as a student. So now at least I know I got the basic functionality now. Now I want to know though, all right, what about that chart of accounts? How do I get into the chart of accounts? Let's go to the settings area. Because again, I think when we're talking about setting up, this is definitely an area we're going to want to get into almost immediately and play around. Um, so we're going to go over here and of course, right to the chart of accounts. I want to see how this works. And here is the entire chart. But watch some of the options you have here, which I think are really cool. That, that I've not, and, and there's one thing in particular I'm going to show you here that I've not seen in any of the other cloud accounting products, which I think is, uh, did I mention? I think it's really cool. So of course the ledger name is going to be the name of the account, the display name, what shows up when people see it, the account number, that's all pretty standard stuff. The category, right? What kind of account is it? But this is what I love, is the visibility, right? Will it show up in the bank accounts? Will it show up for sales purposes? In other words, you can be very specific as to where this account will show up um, in, in, in terms of data entry screens. And this is really nice from the end user standpoint because we talk about friction. If I'm entering a sales type transaction, why do I want to see the entire chart of accounts? I would only want to see the accounts that might need to be used in a sales transaction. Now that doesn't mean there'd be no expenses, but maybe only the kinds of expenses that I would expect to see, such as things that might get reimbursed, right? But this way I'm able to, when I'm setting up these accounts, be very specific so I can limit how many accounts 
accounts show up in those drop downs when I'm filling out the forms in the accounting software. So they've given us this uh, ability here to really control the user experience for our own clients so that when they're getting in here, it's just easier. There's less for them to go through in order to figure out what they need to enter and where. So definitely uh, get into that, I think. Now notice here, it's page one of seven, right? There's 62 total records. Pay attention to these little things. It'll help you navigate the software that much better because at first glance you might say, oh my God, where's the rest of the chart of accounts, right? Well, they're showing it to you, you know, just you know, a handful at a time. So of course you can toggle through here, but you can also, now I'm on page two, you can also search here. If you know what the name of the account is, like let's say I wanted to see customer deposits. I want to be able to look at customer deposits and, and, and let's see an example of how an account gets set up with the information properly filled out. So of course the standard information as I pointed out is here, but really what I want to look at is the visibility, right? Where would we want to see it? I might actually want to be able to see this on an invoice because I might want to be able to use an invoice to capture the deposit that I'm receiving from a customer. Over here it comes in as other payment, right? and other receipt, and you can see that it's grayed out. You, 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 of course, you have to make it available in journals and reports. So let's click Save. And now what that'll let me do is if I go to Sales and Sales Invoices, and I create a new invoice, and of course, we're going to have a whole lesson on sales, so I'm not going to get into that here. But uh, what I wanted to get at is that we can find this uh, product or service in the Ledger account now will appear here. So let's test my theory and make sure that I'm looking at this correctly. Let's go back and remove it and see if customer deposits doesn't show up here as what I'm capturing. So let's go back to our settings and our chart of accounts. And this is what I like to play with right away the first time I'm looking at a product. So let's say I uncheck that. Let's test the behavior and make sure that what we expect to see is in fact what we see. Because if I find out differently, then it means I didn't understand how that feature works, which means I need to go research that and learn, right? And this is how I learn products. This is how I learn products on my own. My friends and colleagues tell me that they can't believe how I'm able to absorb these products, but that's because I take the time to do this stuff I want to play. And sure enough, customer deposits is gone. So what we're doing there is exactly what you, you expect. We're controlling whether or not that account appears as an option in terms of where you can deposit money. So that's there. Now, let's check one other thing here. I want to go back to banking. And I want to create a new entry. We'll do a sales or a sale or receipt because that might be where we'd want to receive a customer deposit, right? Now, we're going to receive it from a customer and it's going to go into the checking account. But when, and I'll have to add a customer, but as you can see, there's no ability to really select an account here, per se, other than the bank account. In other words, I can't record a, a receipt from a customer uh, without having an invoice down below to apply it to. So if I wanted to do it sort of directly like that, it would have to be here in this other receipts area. Then I might choose the customer, and I'll choose the bank account, and over here, over here I might want to be able to include the account for customer deposits. And sure enough, it's there when I start typing it. So if I wanted to just receive a customer deposit from a customer directly, this is how I do it. And this is the kind of stuff that I do. I start testing out sort of use cases that I know are very common. When I'm learning accounting software, one of the first things I want to know how to do, one of the most basic things, owner contribution, how do I get that set up in the bank account, right? Uh, am I, how do I get capture customer deposits? Again, as I mentioned in the brief write-up on this lesson, as an accountant, I understand how customer deposits are supposed to work. I know that I'm supposed to be able to take the money in and show that as a liability on the balance sheet. But the question is, do how quickly can I learn how to get the software information infrastructure to sort of come together to make that happen. And now I've already figured out how to do customer deposits in Sage 1 by just playing around and making sure that I understand the behavior. And of course, I spent some time ahead of time, so I already had an idea about some of these features, such as <clears throat> being able to choose what areas the account shows up in. Again, really powerful stuff. So we're going to go back to our summary. And over here, it's going to take us back. So if you're setting up Sage 1 for the first time and you're going to do it for an existing client, then you're going to want to go through this interview. Let's create or import customers. Let's quickly take a look at that. So if I go to contacts and I go to customers, I'm not going to teach you how to fill out forms. You know how to do that. I'm just going to show you where to go and what to do. So over here, I can fill out the customer's details. 
And again, really nice layout. I just think it's beautiful. And look at this. So I can add another address. I can add another contact for this address, right? You also may have noticed when I went to go produce a sales invoice and when I went to receive a payment from a customer, there is an option, of course, right in the form to go ahead and add a customer. And this is going to take me into kind of a quick dialogue so I can just get it set up quickly. Or I can go in here into an area like this and enter in more detail. But as you can see, it's not quite as detailed as the other screen because here the idea is I'm trying to get a transaction created on the fly and I want to just be able to quickly get in just what I need at a minimum. Then after the fact, I can certainly go back here and enter the information in, in more detail. So here's customers and of course vendors. Okay, and those are your two choices in terms of contacts. You've basically got customers and vendors and that's it. Now notice here it says new customer when I'm in this dialog, but notice what happens if I just click contact. Now I have new contact. So let's say you have a contact that's not really either, like one of the owners. That's when you would use this area here and just choose a new contact. And you would fill in, of course, the contact type has to be, now it's going to force you to choose either customer or vendor. So if you're dealing with the owner of a company, you know, who's, let's say, making a contribution, then by default, I would set them up as a customer until there's a choice to choose another type. And here's why. You may have picked up on this earlier if you were paying attention. And if I really wanted to be, uh, make this fun, I would probably pause right here and make you answer the question, you know, why, uh, to see if you were paying attention. But, of course, you're just going to keep playing the video anyway. So when I go to receive money, I go to enter a new sale or receipt, receipt it, and I go to other receipt, which is where I showed you I'm going when I'm entering the owner contributions, notice the customer details, and it's optional. But it has to be a customer. So if I wanted to associate a name with the owner, uh, you know, or for that, the, for that matter, associate the owner with the contribution, it's going to have to be done as a customer for now until or unless Sage rolls out, let's say, another contact type list where I could do like other or owners or something. I don't know why accounting software in general, I've yet to see one that has a specific contact area for owners. It would be great to have. But meanwhile, think of them as a customer because ideally and hopefully, mostly they're providing money to the company, right, to fund the working capital needs, uh, not to take money out. But obviously, uh, their hope is going to be to be able to take lots of money out of the business in the form of profits and so on. So that, my friends, is pretty much uh, a good overview, I think, for how to get you started. I always, Like I said, I'm kind of doing this from my own perspective and what I like to do when I first get into an accounting product. And like I said, the first thing I like to do is I like to figure out, you know, get through the basic interview process. That's easy. We can all fill out forms. Then it's a matter of the first thing I want to know is can I record a transaction quickly and easily? You know, does it happen fast? And I've shown you how to do the first thing you're almost always going to want to do with a brand new company anyway, which is account for the owner contributions into the business. The rest is going to be basically going through the setup and making sure that you can add all the stuff that you need to add. And that's really going to be a matter of going through this dialogue and clicking on everything. I'm going to spare you the pain of watching me do that because I think you can figure this all out pretty easily on your own. And then in the next lesson, we're going to start taking a look at the revenue cycle and what that looks like. So we'll actually look at setting up products and services, and we'll look at recording sales, receiving the payment, making sure we know how to get that money deposited into the bank, and so on and so forth. So if you haven't already, go back, take your Sage One accountant free trial, Make sure that you can do everything I've done. Get in there and record, uh, you know, record one or two owner contributions into the business, into a bank account, so that you're basically caught up with me. And ultimately, let's make sure that your balance sheet looks just like mine. Make sure you got $150,000 in there. This way, you're kind of exactly on the same page with me in terms of what things look like and where we are, and you can keep moving forward. And at the end of the day, if you're able to replicate everything I've done and your balance sheet and piano looks exactly like mine, then that means you're learning exactly what I'm trying to teach you, and that means it's working. So as always, if you have any questions, visit the Answers Forum right here on our website at schoolofbookkeeping.com. If you are not a student, you won't be able to access that. So become a student and then you can access that and ask us those questions that you might have for any clarification you need about anything that I've shown you in this or for that matter, any other course that we have. As always, I hope you had some fun here along the way. More importantly, I hope you learned something and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. As you can see, setting up Sage One Accountant is pretty simple and straightforward. There are a few high level things I wanted to make sure were clear so that you know what to do going into it yourself. And now we're going to take a look at really how to start entering transactions in Sage 1, 
starting of course with the revenue cycle.